<laughs> hey, folks, Jimmy Smith, I'm back this time with my boxing breakdown for this weekend. That's right, big boxing car, Cinco de Mayo weekend. It is Canelo Alvarez versus Jaime Munguia. People don't know, I now work for Pro Box TV. We've been talking about this fight for a couple weeks now. And check it out, ProBoxTV.com if you want to check it out. I'm kind of the host of the desk show, and then I, I call live fights every other week. And what's interesting about this fight is the odds are unbelievably skewed. Right now, minus uh, Canelo Alvarez, minus about 600, depending on your book. Jaime Monguia, you can get plus 425. Um, so the consensus, and I'm sitting at a desk discussing this fight with um, – Polly Malinaji, Chris Algieri, uh, Showtime Sean Porter, a lot of times, Teddy Atlas. The consensus for this fight is Jaime Munguia is a live dog. He is capable. He is rangy. He's a volume guy. Puts a lot of pressure. But he's about a year away from beating Canelo Alvarez. That Canelo's about a year away from kind of the cliff that almost all, fighter goes, all fighters go off eventually. And Jaime Munguia is about a year away from being slick enough to really get at and, and, and deal with Canelo. That is the consensus of the experts. I generally agree with that. I would say Canelo's probably going to win. Betting-wise, there's no sense in putting money on uh, Canelo. I'll get to, to an exception in a second. Munguia, plus 421, as a live dog, right, unlike Jamel Charlo who kind of sat there, uh, he's going to make a fight out of it. He's going to go forward. He's going to throw punches. He's going to make Canelo fight. Any live dog can get plus 400 on him. Take it. So, you know, Canelo's probably going to win. That's my pick. Canelo's going to win. As far as betting goes, you will have to put money on Munguia if you're going to put money on anybody. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, the other side of this is Canelo by knockout or disqualification is plus money, which is weird. Being that big of a favorite, yet winning by knockout, you can get plus 175 depending on your book. The reason is Canelo doesn't have the punching power he used to. He doesn't have really the savagery and intensity he used to. He doesn't look for the knockout as much as he used to. But the thing that makes Munguia a live dog is he's going to be there to be hit. He's going to be there to fight. Anyone who's there to fight, you got to get him off you. In order to get him off you, you've got to throw big punches. If you can catch your opponent with a big punch, you can put him down. Canelo can still hit. So... For the plus money, if you can get Canelo by finish, I would take that, simply because Munguia might put Canelo in a position with his physical pressure where Canelo just has to hurt him or rock him or put him on his butt in order to get him to back off. If he were an outside kind of boxer who played distance and range and you know wasn't a particularly busy puncher, then you're like, okay, Canelo might cruise to a decision. I don't think cruising is going to be a huge option for Canelo. He's going to have to fight. So I like Canelo to win. For betting, you got to go with Munguia, just because the odds are just stupid. But I'm going Canelo by knockout simply because if you can get plus money on it, there are going to be those times when those exchanges are going to happen, and they favor Canelo Alvarez. Now, some of the other factors here. Oscar De La Hoya, and we did a whole thing on the, the Pro Box TV show about it. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya getting up and going after Canelo at the press conference and, you know, put respect on my name, all this stuff. I think mind games, as fun as they are to break down, as fun as they are to talk about when it comes to boxing, combat sports in general, I want to say two things. Number one, these are not high school kids, right? These are professionals at the elite level, especially in Canelo's uh, case, who've been at the elite level for years. They know what they're doing. The idea that somebody gets rattled at the press conference and therefore falls apart in the ring, it's very, very rare. It's overrated, right? We as fight fans love the, you know, the 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 pre-fight antics. We love the back and forth. We love the John and this. The idea that the mental games cause an experienced professional to fall apart. It's very, very rare in my experience. Also, the other thing I will say, my number two is I've seen it blow up in somebody's face as many times as I've seen it work. As many times as I've seen a fighter get a psychological advantage by going after an opponent, I've seen that opponent go, oh, really? And kick their ass because it it they felt disrespected or it helped them do that extra run or helped them do that extra sparring session or whatever it is. The idea that I'm going to talk all this trash and therefore it'll help me just as often I've seen it totally blow up in a fighter's face. So the idea that that Oscar De La Hoya is you know, going after Canelo, whether he's right to do that or not, um, 
the idea that Canelo's going to go, oh, my God, and somehow it's going to be an issue in the fight, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. Also, as we discussed on the show, there's this idea that Oscar De La Hood just wrote checks that his fighter has to cash in the ring. Right? You can talk all this smack. It's not you facing Canelo Alvarez. It's Jaime Munguia. Now, we had a little back and forth on the show. Once again, I, I, I suggest checking out ProBoxTV.com. Uh, where where Paulie Malignaggi and Chris Algieri were like, great, if the promoter's going to talk and hype it up, that's just more money. That's what they do. If I'm a fighter sitting there and my promoter's going off on Canelo, well, I'm going to fight Canelo anyway. Right, I'm gonna We're, we're going to fight. So an angry Canelo, okay, well, you know, Jesus, we're going to hit each other in the face. My promoter's not making any worse, and he's making me more money by generating more headlines and making it more of a story. Whatever. I'm a fighter. It's my job to go out there and fight anyway. The idea that the promoter might be putting more on my shoulders eh, doesn't really bug me that much. And they're the pros that I listen to when it comes to boxing. So from their perspective, the trash talk of Oscar Del Hoyer or whatever, he goes, you know, great. If it generates interest, great. Is it overloading a guy in Jaime Munguia who already has enough to deal with? First really, really big fight of his career, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're going to fight anyway. So that's another statement I, I make about kind of pre-fight antics is they, they don't really um, mean that much to me. Also, I have to comment on it because it, the news just broke. Ryan Garcia apparently testing positive for PEDs uh, post Devin Haney. Uh, there's a lot to unpack with this. The, the, the simplest thing to say is it's in line with a guy who missed weight and didn't care. Right, he said, "I don't, I don't care. You know, I didn't make weight. All right, it gave me an advantage. Wonderful. Well, you see how that same logic could lead to him taking a PED and going. If it gives me the, an advantage in the fight. I don't care. Um, and he's made a public statement. He said, "Why would I let them, you know, test me if I was dirty? Well, you don't have a choice. They're gonna test you before the fight. I've seen fighters take all kinds of stuff, thinking it was gonna be out of their system in time. So." Don't give me this, why would I agree to the piss test? You don't have a choice. They're going to piss test you anyway. To fight, you get piss tested. And enough fighters get caught that they really believe that whatever it is is going to be out of their system. They're told by whoever gave it to them it's going to be out of their system, da, 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 and they just mess up. And, you know, his behavior before the fight makes me indicate maybe he wasn't thinking that straight and just didn't realize that what he had was going to be in his system for a while. That's number one. Number two... He bet on himself and he cheated. So there's a there's a, an extra layer here of of ethical issues where the the sports books now can go whoever paid him off and I don't I don't know what sports book he used can go hey whoa you bet on yourself and you cheated this becomes a no contest probably so number one it becomes a no contest so that that that's a wash anyway you're not going to get your money but the idea that you know. There's an ethical, you cheated and then bet on yourself. That's when federal authorities start knocking on your door. We got to talk. You know, you can't do that. So the, the other side of it is he bet on himself while cheating. And once again, insider information, insider knowledge, you can't bet with that. And It just opens up an entire huge can of worms that wouldn't have existed if you didn't get caught doping. Will they rematch? Will the rematch be significantly different? Because part of the whole PED discussion, if he had outboxed Devin Haney cleanly for 12 rounds, yes, the PED is making a no contest and all kinds of ethical issues, but you could sit there and go, well, he outboxed him for 12 rounds. Like the fact that he took PEDs didn't seem to help him. It wasn't like power was the difference. What's the difference in this fight? He didn't outbox Haney for 12 rounds. When he hit him, he had more power. He, he won this fight based on his ability to knock Devin Haney down. One could argue quite convincingly that being on PEDs helped with that. It helps with power, right? It helps with strength, this whole point. So this particular brand of cheating, right, lines up perfectly with the way he won the fight. And it does in ways um, that other fights might not delegitimize, right, the victory itself. Because you won because you hit harder. You took PDs to hit harder. Right? So there are a lot more ethical sides. So we'll do a show today on ProBox TV. Check it out. And we'll talk to the experts about it. But 
and my thoughts on uh, Mugia Canelo and also Ryan Garcia. Take it for what it's worth.